knowing and heeding the call to serve communities. And the idea really is how do you keep that fire burning? And when I talk about myself, about what I have done as a municipal health officer and about working in communities, you all have that idea, right? So I, I won't talk about that. And uh, that decision to serve the town of Quezon and the island of Alabat, Quezon province, was the best decision I've made, save a couple, of course, but it's really among the most life-changing things that I've ever done. And it's an invitation for you to consider something similar. But I won't talk about that. What I would talk is serving communities always elicits a gut reaction, a feeling of, well, I want to do something. I want to go out in the communities. And I'm talking to medical students here, future physicians, doctor ng bayan, all of these things. They, they, they kind of are nice, right? And I want that. And I want to go to communities and I want to serve. And well, that's a given. And I really don't have to talk about that for 20 minutes. What I do want to talk about is when we go to these communities, I always remember whenever somebody would come to our school back when I was a medical student and tell me about serving and going to the rural areas to practice medicine, to actually serve. And the themes would always be something along the lines that, oh, you know, you'll be in beaches and you'll only see uh, cough and colds and uh, you're just going to be uh, very busy for a while and then you take a break and then when you step outside of the house, it's a beach or it's a rice terraces or it's uh, like you pick fruit and all that. And it's so over-romanticized and so idealized, right? That when I was a student, I kept on asking, is it really that? Because, you know, it begs the question, if these communities are really very nice, I always go back to who I am as a health professional, or back then, as a doctor-to-be. And when, you're, when you see patients on a day-to-day -day basis coming to you with complaints that you read in books, well, that's easy. Dear medical students, that's easy. But when the complaints are about poverty, about a lack of hope, about a learned helplessness, what do you do about that? And in these communities, while they seem so idyllic from outside, we all now know that, well, there's something to be said about the people living there. What lies beneath? What lies behind? And what lies beyond? I think that's something that I want to talk about. And what I want to anchor this talk on is that for most Filipinos, and this is the serving part, when you make the decision to go out there and meet people where they are, what they have, what they do, what makes them ill, what makes them well, then we start realizing that for most Filipinos, healthcare is what you see here. That is not a line for a new Apple iPhone. That is the line every single day during the early morning before the Philippine General Hospital outpatient department opens. Imagine people lining up to get healthcare at 4 a.m. out in the street. That's nice because it's a dry season. What if it's not? What's on the upper left-hand side from where you're sitting? That's a health center for an immunization program. Typical one. And then you start asking, why can't we explain to patients that vaccines work? And we even put that as a hashtag. When in fact, how can you explain to patients who are mad, who are uncomfortable with all of the crying kids? Come on. And should we actually get informed consent before we do give and administer the vaccines for these kids? Yes. But do we do that? For those of you who've actually gone to health centers or go to health centers on a routine basis, and I bet nobody does that here in this hall, do we even talk about informed consent for vaccines? Then we start wondering, oh my God, why are they listening to people who don't know 
anything about vaccines? Why do they believe a newscaster over an epidemiologist? Why do they believe a pretentious lawyer from the PAO <laughs> over doctors? It's because we rarely engage people where they are, right? And well, that's your typical setup of what health is for most Filipinos. It's the medical mission. That's one of the things that I detest the most in this healthcare system of ours. It's as if health is something that falls from heaven like manna, and people are just passive recipients of something like that. But it's not even about this, I think. It's, well, because if I were to be honest, healthcare for the people in this room would be this, right? And again, there's something to be said about that. Why is there a difference? And you might accuse me of being so biased about it, but let's go with what the government says. In 2016, when they began this administration, the Department of Health and its Philippine Health Agenda itself stated that this is what public clinics and hospitals are like. And nobody will fight them on this because that's what we know. And I would like to tell you that as a community doctor and as a doctor who's in public health, this, for the most part, is true. I'm angry about that, but the question now is, are you? Kailan natin tinanggap na pag mahirap, iba ang kalusugan niya kaysa sa may kaya? Sino ang nagsabi na pag may kakayahan kang magbayad, magdadagdag ka para mas makakuha ka ng mas magandang uh, servisyong pangkalusugan. Teka lang, saan itinuro yun? Actually, itinuturo siya systematically in med schools all over the country. In that hidden curriculum that's so insidious, we're so used to it, that this is something that we accept as a given. All right. So, what's the point? The point is when you want to go outside and serve communities, you have to anchor your uh, decision to do that on the fact that health is a human right. And that no matter who you are, where you are, who you are, what you're from, <laughs> as long as you love me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right? There's a certain level of healthcare that we all should be enjoying. Where do you draw the line? And unfortunately, when you say you want to serve the communities and go out there, let me tell you that routinely, we uh, violate the right to health of communities every single day. And communities settle for substandard interventions and services, which we actually glorify. Let me tell you this story. What's the story behind this picture? This is a seven-year-old boy in Quezon, Quezon, a patient of mine before. And him, wanting to augment the dinner of his family, went to the seawall and uh, used a makeshift fishing line to fish. Nakakapito na siya o walo, no? And on his last uh, uh, attempt to catch another fish to add to the dinner of that family, a gust of wind happened to come by. And his mouth was open, and he was the one who was caught in his fishing line. Oh, there's an audible gasp, and I understand where that's coming from. But I'm a battle-tested PGH doctor. I see this every single day. This is easy. Huh? I incise, make an incision, clean the wound, right, and then suture it. And we had that in the health center, because I ensured that we had that anesthetic. That's it. And the uh, follow-up, all of those things. And this uh, kid became well. I post this on Facebook, I get a thousand likes easy. Pat myself on the back and say, good job, Dr. Medina. Doc Lopo, you're the best. <laughs> right? That is what we glorify. That's what we value when we serve communities. But let me tell you, and again, this is, this is to the med students, and for those who are uh, non-health uh, professionals, when we go to our pediatric surgery rotations and lectures, this is substandard care. Why? 
Because when a kid is traumatized, you don't re-traumatize the kid despite you wanting to help him or her. So what am I driving at? If this happened in a Metro Manila suburb, or la pala tayong suburbs, no? in Metro Manila, right? And this happened in an affluent community, and don't tell me, Doklo Pao, they won't think of doing that. Uh, kids these days, we you know what they, they're into. They eat Tide Pods and all of those things. So I bet they, this could happen very easily. If this happened in an affluent upscale neighborhood, guess the, where this kid would have been seen? And attended to. This necessitates at least a, a, a semi full or a full OR setup. At the very least, the kid should be sedated. And then the surgeon comes in, scrubs very well, dunks the down, plays, uh, have the nurse, has, has the nurse play on his iPhone, uh, December Avenue, because I like that. And, uh, <laughs> right? And before. The chorus to Sangalan ng Pag-ibig is done. Hanggang sa... Pagkatapos nun, the surgery is done. And you scrub out, and then you charge an arm and a leg for it. But that, my friends, is standard of care. When did we accept that that is something that only a privileged few would be able to enjoy? See? We glorify this, and this we share. And that's serving communities for you. And that's fine. That's fine. It's not to this the desire. It's to cast shade at our understanding of how bad the system makes us behave. And this is the next point. I want you to realize that that decision to serve communities, it's not about the service. It's not about the procedures. But it's about that Understanding of health as a very complex thing. Ang tawag nga namin siya ng masalimut na usapin ng kalusugan. Do you know, do you still, guys, you still know what this is? When I ask my medical students what this is, nobody knows anymore. This is the Gordian knot, and it's associated with a semi-historical, mythical personality, Alexander the Great. And when he talked about the knot that couldn't be unraveled or untangled or untied, when Alexander heard of that, it's like a thousand years, whatever, at hindi pa siya Alexander heard of that and said, well, I can untangle that. What he did was to cut right through it with his sword. Cheating? In a way, yeah, sure. But this is about understanding that there is something about knowing how bad or how convoluted or how complex healthcare is and health systems are and that we can actually start unraveling that. So, this is me trying to pitch to the future doctors here, maybe the future health professionals. People here, not even health professionals, but people who actually want to help communities, you know? We're millennials. We, you know, they tell us that we're the me generation and all of that. I disagree. I think we're the people who always want to find meaning in what we do. And in that sense, I actually would want to relate my story to you. That when I was your age and trying to look at how I would deal with this desire of mine to serve communities, I was blessed and privileged to have had opportunities to do so. But let me tell you, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, it was a struggle to find the curricular and co-curricular and extracurricular avenues to be able to uh, express and actually find and actualize what I wanted was to serve people. It was a struggle and I had to find my own way. I had to grab uh, opportunities and I actually had to make my own opportunities. We were a group uh, and my now wife is part of this picture. We, we were a group wanting to serve people and serve communities. And because there was none, we just created something for us. We went to communities. We went to Palawan for six weeks, going up from Puerto Princesa up to El Nido, going to island municipalities, just going around and looking at what people were experiencing in terms of healthcare. What was it there? Six weeks of doing that and immersing and learning and knowing. And so, I look back at that, 
And when I was still a municipal health officer, I wanted people to actually uh, have that experience as well. So even while MHO, I was inviting and I was uh, asking people to come visit my community. It wasn't really to highlight what I was doing per se, but it's actually trying to share in that dream because I was always looking at how it used to be. I didn't know anything about serving. I didn't know what that meant. And I wanted the kids now, kids, and I say that with a lot of respect, to have those experiences. Because, well, you guys have the energy, you guys have the dream, you have the intellectual capacity, the heart, the courage, the compassion. So I want you to understand what it means when you want to serve. I want you to conquer the fear of the unknown, the unfamiliar, and the uncomfortable. I want you to go outside of your comfort zones. Because I believe that when we are studying to be doctors and that we're being educated to be uh, physicians, our education should be emancipating instead of being so shackling. We're tied to the hospital too much. But the battle is not there. It's already lost in the hospital. The battle is out in communities. The battle is out at the primary level and the front lines. And medica medical education should be empowering. I should be able to show you so you make the decision for yourself. You should see what's out there so you choose to do what I did. Walang pilitan. So, what do I want to share with you? Now that I'm faculty, I have a bit more space and more elbow room to create things. And uh, since there was none before, what, I, what we did was with our NGO, the Alliance for Improving Health Outcomes Incorporated, or IHO, since we are claiming to be an NGO that wants to capacitate human resources for health, what we did was to create an immersion program built on what we were already doing, get like-minded individuals and create spaces for students to go out there, explore that desire to serve, and actually understand what it means. And so these are just the objectives. We're not going to talk about them in detail, but it's really about providing the experiences that your medical curricula that are existing are not providing. And it's about showing you that local governments and frontline health systems are actually working despite the reputation of corruption and all these things. When I show you that government can actually work, isn't it something isn't it a sort of a nudge that I want to do that? Because frankly, it's not about you. And when we talk about that framework, it's about the meaningful immersion or the meaningful break or the meaningful summer vacation where I make you realize that health is not just about sickness or wellness, but health is about social development and dynamics. And you have to understand that health does not exist in a vacuum. Health is a multifactorial thing. So there has to be sectors, there has to be collaboration. It has to function from a certain level of development. And that's what you get in the immersion. And it's about you reflecting, what good is it to treat a person's illness if the person would go back to the conditions that led to the illness in the first place? It's about you seeing that and suddenly thinking, of how can I change that? Because when I'm back in the hospital, when I read my books, it's all about curing. Nobody really talks about what happens after. Isn't that something that's exciting as well? So when we tried to operationize this, it's now the third cohort, and I'm going to end soon. But I'm just going to show you that there are people providing these spaces. You just have to uh, be mindful about that. And hopefully by the next month, we'll be getting signed up soon. So last year, the third cohort, we had 32 sites and 350 participants from several medical schools in the country. Imagine what we can do with that when they understand what it really means to serve and they actually want to serve, they create the space for the enabling environment to serve with meaning. That's the dream. It's not about the heroics. It's not about the sacrificial nature. It's about choosing to do something and doing it correctly. 
And uh, just to show you that who are the professors, the professors are young people as well. These are doctors to the barrios who are willing to teach and to actually show you what happens out there so that we replicate our good practices and we multiply ourselves. And just a few pictures and I'm ending soon. It's about going to the farthest places, Tawitawi, Sarangani, Bohol, Abra, they all like, like sound touristy again. Andun pa rin naman yung happy eh. Andun pa rin naman, ang ganda kaya ng Pilipinas, no? Kailangan pa ba natin yung pagdiinan? Pero kailangan natin ipagdiinan ay kahit ang ganda ng Pilipinas at ang laki ng potential, bakit walang nangyayari in terms of healthcare? So what's important also in the immersion is these post-immersion uh, processing sessions and that what, what's, what we give them. We give them the cognitive and affective anchors to want to do it again next year with now a different handle growing through the process and ultimately when they become doctors hoping that they choose the path to be uh, done. And uh, for some funding, we were able to get a few scholarships and it, it is in honor of Dr. Dreyfus Perlas, the doctor to the barrio, former GUTB, who was assassinated back in 2017 uh, while he was returning from a medical mission in a, uh, beside his uh, town of service. No? So I'm ending with this. This one just passed last week. This is the Universal Healthcare Act. And it talks about setting up a primary care system that's robust to be able to sort of swing the whole thing about healthcare in the country. This is an opportunity. But you know what? See the line where the sky meets the sea. <laughs> Called me, I hope it calls you. The challenge with this is you will be the doctors in this new, hopefully new, but we have to be involved in the conversation because we have to change things. The challenge really is for the Philippines and the Filipino, how far are you guys willing to go? How much are you willing to try? And how much are you guys willing to do? Thank you.